Q3 earnings season is raging on guys and this past week might have been the biggest of all as we had four ultra massive tech giants report in Google, Amazon, Meta and Microsoft. How many of you guys can say that you don't own any of these stocks in your portfolio? Let me know in the comment section because my guess is that I would say just about all of you would have to own at least one of these. I think you'd be crazy not to, but as for me, I own all four of them and I love them as kind of solid long-term investments in my portfolio. So I can't wait to run through their earnings reports. I'm gonna let you know how they did. I'll give you my thoughts, share my thoughts on them. And as always, I'll let you know if I even consider these a buy post earnings. Not telling you guys what to do, but just kind of sharing my own perspective on them. So let's not waste any time. Can't wait to run through these. Let's jump into it. All right, so going through these in chronological order from when they reported this past week, the first one at bat was Google, who reported on Tuesday. And in my opinion, it was a pretty solid report given the weak economy with a beat on EPS above 7% and a slight beat on revenue of just over 1% too. Speaking of revenue though, it grew 11% year over year, which was fantastic to see, as it was the first double digit rise in over a year, while also marking the third quarter in a row of accelerating growth. Right before that, it was decreasing growth for many quarters coming off the pandemic. And yet, despite the strong numbers, Wall Street actually hated the results, punishing the stock worse than any other day since the start of the pandemic in March of 2020. How crazy is that? Now, this had pretty much everything to do with their important cloud segment missing expectations, which also wasn't as impressive as Microsoft's numbers, which we'll cover in just a second. But during the earnings call, the CFO stated that uh, while Google Cloud remains strong, it is still being impacted by customers spending less, which analysts were really disappointed to hear about as they were predicting the exact opposite. But the analysts are now saying that Google, Microsoft, and Amazon are all kind of hinting towards lower spending in future quarters, which I'll show you those other reports too in just a second. But as a result of that weaker guidance, Google stock fell about 10% for the week. And you know what guys, the more that it falls, the more I'm gonna call it a long-term buy because I actually love their earnings. Cloud, for example, still grew by 22% year over year, despite already being the third largest in the world. And we saw a return to growth for advertising too, which was a super crucial rebound to see after the very rare consecutive drops in Q4 and Q1. There was a lot of weakness in advertising because of the economy. So a rebound there is a good sign. And it also beat estimates too. So, you know, seeing advertisers spending during this really weak economy, again, it's just a good sign. On top of that, I also feel that Google stock has been held back lately because of all the AI advancements of Microsoft, which investors feared would fuel their Bing search engine, that now has generative AI integrated into it and that it would start to eat away at Google's vitally important search engine market share. But from what I can tell at least, that hasn't really materialized at all. In fact, in recent months, Google implemented their own version of generative AI called BARD, and so far, it seems to be keeping Microsoft at bay as they still command over 91% market share as of September, with Bing sitting at just around 3%. And that's for the entire world, by the way. I get that Google stock has run up a lot this year, but it is still technically down 20% from the top. And for me, a 20% dip in Google is usually good enough reason to buy more, especially considering the valuation of a forward PE of just 18 and a PEG of just barely above one. Both of those are well below their five-year averages of 26 and 1.5 respectively. I would, however, keep those uh, purchases very small given all the macroeconomic headwinds going on right now. And then I would just kind of buy heavier if a recession happens to hit and it dives lower, then I'd buy a lot more. But either way, you know, I'm still gonna be buying more Google stock, especially the more that it falls. I really love this one long-term and I just think it's, one of the best kind of all around stocks in the entire market. So I'm a big uh, bull, big believer in Google stock. 
But what about Microsoft though, who also reported on Tuesday and is pretty much always a top three holding of mine, usually the largest in my portfolio. Well, they came out swinging on this one with big boosts from their investments in artificial intelligence and also fueled by their cloud dominance, both of which helped them easily beat EPS by double digits on top of huge growth for their size at almost a 13% rise in sales and a whopping 27% rise in profits. And guys, I cannot stress this next point enough, but Microsoft is one of the best run companies in the world. Just look at this profitability here. They did a massive $56 billion in sales with over 22 billion going straight to net income profit just this quarter alone. That is insane profitability. And by the way, their margins only got even better, rising another double digit percent in the quarter. And I've been saying this all along. I think the management team there being led by one of the best CEOs in the world has just transformed Microsoft into a cloud computing and artificial intelligence beast. Azure, for example, climbed another nearly 30%, which also beat estimates. And not only was it higher growth than Google, but it's also despite them having much more market share than Google too, at like twice their size. So to still be growing even faster is very impressive. And much of that, by the way, came on the heels of new generative AI tools that they started implementing into their cloud services and started providing it to customers. In fact, they claim around three percentage points of their growth was directly tied to the new AI tools. And the good news didn't even stop there as they also guided for more revenue in the next quarter than analysts were expecting too, which would also imply another growth quarter of 15%. That's just unbelievable for their size. I don't know how they managed to put up these kind of numbers every quarter. But yet, despite all these positives, after the stock initially climbed on Wednesday, it actually retreated the next day and left it only slightly in the green to finish the week, which was pretty surprising to me. But you know what, guys? That's just Microsoft. It doesn't usually get very big spikes. It's more of a slow moving kind of stock that you know just kind of always consistently climbs and rarely ever dips by large amounts, which is why I always tell you guys when it dips, you got to take advantage of it. I made so many videos saying that, you know, when it was uh, dropping coming off the pandemic and unfortunately, it's already rebounded quite a bit, leaving the valuation much more expensive than the sector at a PEG ratio around 31% higher than the sector median. However, I will point out that it is still a little less than its five-year average. And overall, I've just always kind of felt that Microsoft is that type of stock that you can really kind of just buy at any moment. I'm speaking for myself, of course, but at any moment, I can just kind of pick up any shares of Microsoft and I don't think I'd ever regret it because it always just kind of steadily climbs up. The key though, the key with Microsoft stock is to make sure to buy much heavier when it dips because it's so rare that it dips. It takes like sometimes a recession, it takes macroeconomic headwinds just to drag that stock down. But that's the opportunity, that's where you're gonna get the, the lower cost basis so that you can actually make some good profits on Microsoft stock. Otherwise, it's kind of a slow moving, steady stock. And you know you may not be too happy with the returns, but that's why it's just important to buy much heavier whenever it dips. So you know right now, I think it's okay, not the most attractive right now, but certainly if it was to fall, if it was to dip at all, we get a recession, anything like that, that's the opportunity to go much heavier into Microsoft stock and you can't miss that opportunity. Moving on to Wednesday though, we had Facebook and Instagram parents company Meta report. And them too, I feel knocked it out of the park, which was also in large part thanks to those recovering advertising sales that Google talked about the day prior. Helping Meta beat on both the top and bottom line with a whopping 18% beat on EPS and year over year, guys, it marked really high growth with sales soaring by 23%, which was the highest it's been in two years and net income profits absolutely skyrocketed by 164% to nearly $12 billion as well, so more than doubling in size. And yet, can you guess what happened to the stock? It actually fell by nearly 4% this week. So what the heck happened here? Well, it was an easier comparison to last year, so you know that's why you're gonna see that higher growth, but more importantly, it's the continued drag on profits that their investments into the metaverse is causing. Here's a chart, for example, showing how their Reality Lab segment uh, has lost billions of dollars in every single quarter since they started reporting it back in 2020. And I'll just do some quick math here for you guys. It'll show here that uh, the bleeding 
has only grown over time as they lost over $2 billion in 2020, which grew to over $10 billion in losses in 2021, and that grew to $13 billion in 2022. And then so far this year, it's $11.5 billion for the first three quarters. But if you include the next quarter, you keep the losses at the same as, as this, uh, same as the previous two, then it actually grows yet again to a whopping $15.2 billion in losses just in a single year for just that you know, segments. You know, that's super crazy. I mean, to give you some perspective, Tesla, for example, is one of the most popular stocks out there with a market cap of over $650 billion. And they only did $13 billion in profits in all of last year. So Meta actually loses more than Tesla does as an entire company. They lose more than that on just the metaverse alone. That's kind of crazy. So why am I still a shareholder and why am I not even concerned about all this? Well, it's because people forget just how insanely profitable Meta as an entire company already is, with their social media cash cow platforms generating over $66 billion in operating cash flow just in the past 12 months alone. So they have all the money they need to keep investing in this. And look, it may not seem like a great idea right now, but they have to invest that money somewhere. And considering that most analysts think the metaverse will be worth trillions in the future, it may not be that bad of a bet to at least try to be an early adopter and, and you know a market leader of it. Plus, I just think that right now, they're really just trying to get as many devices into as many consumers' hands as possible. I don't think they're really thinking about uh, the profitability yet. And I think that's why they sell their headsets, you know, very cheap for just hundreds of dollars when Apple, for example, sells theirs for thousands of dollars. But I think longer term, they will start to generate software sales from advertising and also their own kind of subscription services too. Like for example, just recently in June, they launched an $8 subscription plan. So I think you give that enough time and the potential will start to show itself. In the meantime though, Meta remains just as large as ever with still over 2 billion daily active users, over 3 billion monthly active users, so close to half the world's entire population, and they're even generating more revenue per user as well than uh, analysts were expecting. Speaking of which, analysts also pra praise Meta for doing a better job of improving the effectiveness of their online ads following Apple's iOS privacy changes that hurt most other app developers mostly thanks to their heavier investments into artificial intelligence, which Meta is using to attract more advertisers. There was, however, one other reason for the stock falling, though, which had to do with commentary from Meta's management team about the conflict between Israel and Palestine, saying that they saw a direct correlation to weaker advertising spend that started at just about the same time as that conflict, and as such, they gave wider guidance than analysts wanted to see because they're not really sure how this might play out. But even then, at the midpoint of their guidance, it would still be about 20% growth year over year, which is huge for their size. So regardless, I still think that the stock is looking pretty attractive here. Like I said with the others too, it was a bigger buy during the post-pandemic dip, which I did make tons of videos on. I even got some angry comments, you know, kind of calling me dumb for buying the stock because they felt that the investments into the metaverse was going to bankrupt Meta. But of course, that never happened and the stock did skyrocket since then rising by almost 150 percent just this year alone but going forward it is still down over 20 percent from the top and the valuation is over 30 percent cheaper than both the sector and their own five-year average on a pg ratio basis which is looking pretty attractive so i'm still calling this a long-term buy now it might not be the most attractive that we've gone through so far you know I think a lot of people would argue that Microsoft is just a safer, all-around, better kind of company. Google, I would say, is the more attractive, just overall kind of stock to have in the portfolio. But, you know, Meta is no slouch either, and they've got solid profits, they're investing for the future, and the valuation isn't that bad either. So I still think Meta stock is good, but like the others, if it were to dip, that's the opportunity to go much heavier too. So, you know, just kind of keep all of that in mind. But with that said, guys, we're running low on time here, so let's just try to squeeze in one more really quick with the almighty Amazon, who reported on Friday. And again, I just think that they had a very strong showing here as well. Really one of the best, beating EPS by more than 60% 
while also growing their gigantic sales by over 13% to over $143 billion. And biggest surprise of all, they more than triple their net income to about $10 billion as well. Now, in relation to their sales, yeah, those profits are not a huge chunk of that. And it was also an easier comparison to the prior year for, for profitability. But I've said this many times about Amazon. They don't even really try to be profitable. They care much more about just growing their market share and their dominance and then they'll worry about making profits later. But, you know, once in a while, you have a quarter like this where they actually take it, you know, somewhat seriously and you see their profits like triple in size. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. And that also raised their operating margin, by the way, too, to almost a record high as well. Uh, anyway, during the earnings call, the CEO spoke about pretty much all of their segments doing better, especially their advertising sales, thanks to that rebound that we've discussed which grew by a whopping 26% year over year and was even higher than Google's 9% and Facebook's 23% ad growth as well. So very impressive. Cloud was also a highlight with AWS growing by a double digit rate. However, at just 12%, it was actually smaller than the 29% growth of Microsoft and 22% growth of Google. Part of that is, of course, because Amazon is already just so large as the market leader. So it's kind of harder for them to grow there. But it also hints at companies trying to cut costs and spend less on cloud services, which is why they may be looking at smaller alternatives like Microsoft or Google, especially, you know, since they're now offering robust AI tools that, uh, you know, make those services look even more attractive. Still, the report was strong enough to send shares rising by almost 7% on Friday, although it had initially fallen the two days prior because of the weaker guidance that other companies were giving. So it ended up the uh, ending the week just slightly positive, just slightly in the green. And actually, Amazon, too, gave weaker guidance than expected. So it definitely seems like there's a trend here of strong earnings results right now, but perhaps an economic slowdown on the horizon, given our high inflation and high interest rates that could cause a recession. Zooming out on the stock, though, we've got another one here that I screamed about during the recent dip, but it's now climbed by over 50% this year in a large recovery. However, even here, you know, it's still down over 33% from the top, which I still think is good enough of a dip to, to be adding in small amounts. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Overall, in conclusion, I would say that I like the reports from the big four tech giants. Now, the another one, the fifth kind of massive tech giant that everyone thinks about, Apple. I believe they're reporting next week, so we'll have to see how they do. But in terms of the ones that reported so far, I would say, you know, very solid Q3 results. Obviously, a lot of them are talking about future weakness coming up, and that is a little bit of a concern. We saw the same thing from the big banks. Very solid performance in Q3, but they were all warning about a possible recession happening soon. So that's something to keep an eye on. Just be aware of it. Make sure you do have a lot of savings and cash on the sidelines in case something happens. You want to be able to go in there and buy heavier too. But for now, you know, I still think that these stocks are performing, these companies are performing very well, and the stocks are still attractive from a long-term perspective. But that's just, you know, my opinion. I'd love to hear what you all have to say down below. Leave your comments. Thank you for stopping by, my friends. Thank you for all the support. And I will catch you in the next one. Hope you're all doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.